The accolades keep on flying in for the 2022-2023 Sacramento Kings. Add to the list the NBA Basketball Executive of the Year Award for Kings General Manager Monty McNair. You'll hear from McNair and Sacramento Kings head coach Mike Brown. A little off-season preview right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all off season long. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10 News. And congratulations are in order Sacramento Kings general manager Monty McNair named essentially the GM of the year, but to spice it up, it's real title. It's the NBA basketball executive of the year. So the Kings have executive of the year, head coach of the year, unanimously first time ever in history for Mike Brown, uh, the clutch player of the year, uh, two all-stars, man, just the, the list goes on and on for the successes and the accolades and the recognition that the Sacramento Kings have gotten. And hopefully it'll continue uh, with the Kings getting two all NBA players in De'Aaron Fox uh, and to Monta Sabonis here when those teams do come out. But I mean, that speaks to how great of a season it was. And also, truth be told, what the expectations were and, and how many people uh, around the league and how many voters and media members and, and even members of the NBA were caught off guard or caught by surprise with how this year went. Well, now that's in the past. Like You're going to hear from Mike Brown uh, in, in this uh, podcast today. You're also going to hear from Monty McNair talking about like how easy it actually is to go from where the Kings were to get to this point, but how much more difficult it is to go from where the Kings are at to a perennial championship contender. Even if it's less ground to make up or less ground to move, or they're not moving that much higher up the standings or that much higher up the win column or going that much deeper in the playoffs, it still takes a lot of work to close that tiny gap. I've been saying during the season, the Kings this year went from bad to good but it's really hard to get from good to great. And that's what the Sacramento Kings are trying to tackle. That's what they're going to address in this off season. And that's what a lot of uh, like, we're going to take everything that the Sacramento Kings do, every decision that Monty McNair makes every uh, player move or or what the players do in the off season. When we get a look at them at training camp, what the Kings do in the draft, everything is going to be analyzed like under a microscope or with a magnifying glass. How much better does this make the Kings? Does this help them get from good to, to great. That's going to be a major focus of this offseason with everything that the Sacramento uh, Kings do. But before we even get to that, we have to make sure we're giving the recognition that is properly deserved and owed to what the Sacramento Kings have done this year, right? We're about to leave this year behind. We're about to say it was fun. It was amazing ride so long. It's all about the future. But I think for the remainder of this week, at the very least, we can uh, continue to appreciate what this ride has been. I've seen some of you saying, hey, Matt, you should do like a best moments of the year podcast and things like that. I'm definitely interested in doing that. We'll uh, have different guests on to recap the year and recap the season. Uh, I have a great guest coming for you in tomorrow's episode of Locked on Kings. I'll tell you more about that uh, at the end of the show. But I, I think especially when it comes to Monty McNair, like the work that he has done to be named executive of the year when he, this is his first ever stop as an NBA GM. Now he spent a ton of time in in like the Houston Rockets front office working under Daryl Morey and stuff like that. So, but, but to come to Sacramento and to completely turn this franchise around, some would say maybe it took longer than he wanted. Monty actually said uh, in his press conference today that, He's kind of happy it worked out this way because when he first started was when COVID was going on and fans weren't in the building and he said how how bad would it have been or or not less fun it would have been for the Kings to return to the playoffs sooner but not have fans in the building. Uh, He makes a good point, to be honest with you. Uh, Maybe it took a little bit longer than he wanted or Sacramento Kings fans wanted the, the three years that he's been here, but he got his contract extension because he deserved it. Ultimately, he delivered this Kings team back to the playoffs. He absolutely hit his uh, hire of Mike Brown out of the park. 
And the reality is like this recognition is nice, but there are a lot of people that owe Monty McNair an apology. I'm not going to single anybody out, whether it's media members, whether it's fans, whoever it is. Like there, are, Monty had a lot of doubters for a lot of the moves that he made, especially, of course, the Tyrese Halliburton, uh, DeMontis Sabonis trade. In fact, we're going to start there. Let's start with uh, Monty's comments on, uh, he was asked by my partner, Kevin John from ABC 10, just about if, if, if it feels good, if there's like kind of a, I told you so with how things have worked out for the Sacramento Kings this year, after the criticism that he took, uh, and, and the Sacramento Kings in general took for trading Tyrese Halliburton for DeMontis Sabonis at last year's, uh, trade deadline. And, and here's what, uh, Monty had to say about that. If, if I knew that we would be here right now, maybe I would have said it at the time, but again, we, we, uh, we felt very good in what Domas could do for us and how he would pair with De'Aaron. Uh, we still had a lot of work to do. Um, we had a big summer after that, that that really helped to fill in around those guys and solidify what ended up being the, the playoff team. But, um, you know, look, we, we, we know when, when fans or um, media or whoever is saying something about a transaction, what they're really saying is, like, I want this to work out. And so sitting here this year, it just, it just means that, um, you know, we're, we're happy that we've reached this, this point. Um, and, uh, again, we'll continue to take, take bets that we think have a good chance to work out. We're not going to, we're not going to bat a thousand. Um, and, uh, so there's going to be other times where we take them and they don't, don't work out, but we've, we've had a nice run, uh, credit to my group there, uh, for pushing me on a lot of them and, uh, you know, and credit to Mike and the players for ultimately you know, putting it all together. Um, so, you know, we, we talked a lot about like the individuals we bring in and um, the talent level and who they are as human beings, but you never know what it's going to be, especially when you have a ton of turnover like we had, new coaching staff. I think we turned over half the roster. Um, you don't know what it's going to look like. And so credit to those guys. Um, I know they had a lot of great comments the other day about the, um, you know, just the camaraderie that the team had and how they were all pulling for each other, um, you know, how Mike and their staff helped do that. And so to me, that's the special part um, is seeing it all come together, um, you know, and not knowing what, what's going to happen. I know a lot of people have walked back some of the things they said uh, about that trade, or at the very least have said it's a, it's a 50, 50, even a uh, win, win for both teams type trade, whatever it is, it's fine. And in a lot of ways, Monty getting, the ultimate recognition as a general manager by by winning this award, at least individual recognition, uh, even though the award should go to the entire front office, but Monty is at the head of that. Um, I, 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 that kind of puts to bed all of the um, negative recognition that Monty got. And if anything else now, like his job, like I said, gets harder and the criticisms maybe get louder because now he really has to fine tune this group. He really has to make the right decisions for this team to improve. Now there is a baseline of expectations, which is making it through the first round, M maybe securing home court advantage again, building upon 48 wins. Another thing Monty talked a lot about uh, that you'll probably hear here in a second is, is uh, Monty talking about uh, like needing to build upon 40 wins and a lot of teams that make deep playoff runs are, are like 50 plus win teams. In fact, let me get out of the way. Here is Monty talking about accomplishing the short term goal and now looking ahead to long term goals. You know, a tough end uh, always is when you make the playoffs, but i um, proud of Coach Brown and his staff for what they did from, from day one uh, up until game seven here. So a uh, fantastic run. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've talked, I think, since I came here about kind of a, a short-term goal of making the playoffs. Uh, I'm happy to finally have that box checked, uh, but it also means now on to the next goal of, of building this thing into a, a long-term playoff team, uh, win some rounds in the playoffs, and ultimately contend for a title like we've talked. Of course, a major reason why the Kings had so much success this year is Monty McNair hiring Mike Brown and allowing Mike Brown to come in and, and, and really change the culture here in a lot of ways in Sacramento. Monty deserves credit for hiring the guy that became 
the coach of the year, the first ever unanimous coach of the year. He absolutely deserves credit for that. Now he'll deflect credit. And you're going to hear he deflects credit and puts everything on Mike Brown and gives Mike Brown all the praise, which he absolutely should do. But this is this is Monty's first ever head coach hire himself. Remember, he inherited Luke Walton and granted he committed to Luke Walton and then ended up firing Luke Walton a handful of games into the season. So that doesn't necessarily look the best on Monty's permanent record or GM record, if that is a thing. But in his first opportunity to truly interview a head coach, sit down and look through candidates and hire a head coach, he hired the guy who that same year or that first season became coach of the year. Here's what Monty had to say about Mike Brown. Mike's unanimous coach of the year speaks for itself um, and the job that him and his staff did. Fantastic. Um, and uh, I think I've talked a lot about too, um, you know, I know my, my strengths and weaknesses and Mike's a fantastic compliment to him. He's an incredible culture builder. Um, you know, we, we saw from day one all the way through the, the ups and downs of the, of the season, we had a pretty young team and uh, to be able to coach them, get the most out of them, uh, prepare them. We had, I don't even know, five or six guys, I think, make their playoff debut this, this year. Um, and to take the defending champs to seven, to have those guys continue to respond while still having a voice that they listen to through all that is, uh, you know, what makes them special. So there are a lot of decisions that the Sacramento Kings have to make this offseason, a lot of ways that uh, Monty McNair is going to analyze how can he improve this roster. But similar to my expectations going into the trade deadline, he has a fundamental belief in the core of this roster that's already been assembled, right? De'Aaron Fox, Demonta Sabonis, Keegan Murray, Malik Monk, Kevin Herter. Like You have to believe that those five guys, at the very least, maybe even Davion Mitchell if you want to add a six, those six are the expectation is that those six are going to continue to be here, that the, the the Kings are going to continue to build around them. Now he could trade one or two of those guys or multiple, or whoever he could, if the move is right and maybe he can acquire a star or move up in the draft or move out of the draft or whatever, Monty's going to look at all of his options. So I'm not saying he's guaranteed to go into next season with those six, but a lot of Monty's belief is this Kings team is not just going to improve by adding to what the Kings did in this Kings roster and expecting them to do the same thing they did this past season, but that this team is expected to grow themselves. This young core is expected to grow. Monty talked a lot about that uh, in his press conference. We got to sit down here, take a breath, um, you know, hug our families for a little bit, uh, but then we'll get back to it next week and we'll have all those conversations about how do we go forward. Um, but we, we, we have a fantastic group here. Um, we have a lot of youth, um, which means that those guys have room to grow. Um, but it also means that there's a, you know, a, a challenge for them to continue to grow. It's not, you know, nothing is guaranteed as we know in this business. And, um, so, you know, we had, I don't even know five or six guys in the building today. So, which is a great sign. Um, and, uh, we know those guys are going to work, but it's just going to get harder each step from here. And, um, you know, continuing to, to answer those challenges is going to be, um, you know, what's put in front of us. A couple of the major question marks this year specifically have to do with DeMontis Sabonis and Harrison Barnes. Now, Harrison is the more pressing question because Harrison is actually a free agent. DeMontis Sabonis has one year left on his contract. However, he does become uh, extension eligible. So I combine these two answers into one. Monty talking about the potential plan with Domas and Monty talking about the potential interest in, in, in bringing back Harrison Barnes. If you heard Monty McNair and listened to Monty McNair press conferences before, you know, he's not going to give every, everything or really anything away with what his plans are going forward. Uh, but I still think you should listen to the words that he had to say about um, potentially bringing Harrison back and, and certainly making extending DeMontis Sabonis uh, a priority. Yeah, Domas is uh, obviously an all-star this year. Um, I think should be all-NBA along with De'Aaron, so we'll find that out soon. Um, but, yeah, Domas is a, a huge part of obviously what we do, and um, we're going to you know, do all we can to, to keep him here and build around him. Yeah, no, I think for us, you know, look, we're, I don't even know, three, four days away from a pretty painful end. Um, so we're going to sit down and have all those conversations. Obviously, Harrison's been a fantastic uh part of our team of that leader and and uh, one of two guys with championship experience for us which was you know a big part of uh, getting our young guys ready to go so we'll, we'll have all those conversations uh, in the coming weeks I'm very interested to see what Monty does around this draft because the Sacramento Kings are not going to have a lottery pick uh, they're going to likely be in like the early 20s range and uh, 
we will, at least I'm going to do the best that I can. I'll be completely honest with you at this point in time. Like I've paid very little attention to college basketball outside. And, and I know obviously the, the main prospects at the top, the Victor Wimbayamas and, and, and things like that. Um, so I, I'm aware of the very, very top of this draft, but I have a lot of research when it comes to players outside the lottery that Monty could be keeping an eye on. It's going to be a lot harder of an off season for me to break down talent than it was last year when I was in love with Keegan Murray. And when the Kings moved up, I was like, Keegan should be the guy or maybe Maybe it's Jaden Ivey. Like last year was super easy to cover the draft in all, all reality. This year is going to be a little more difficult. And another aspect of this draft is do the Sacramento Kings really need another young player? The answer could be yes. It could be no. Is there a player like is, is the best talent available at that spot? Someone who can actually come in and make an impact for the Sacramento Kings and help them get better and build upon next year? Or is it in the... Uh, is it in the best interest of Monty McNair to package that pick, use that pick in a trade or, or, or somehow move up in the draft? Whether, I mean, I think he would have to do it on draft night. If I'm not mistaken, I always get confused with the CBA with this kind of stuff because he traded away. Remember the rights uh, or he uh, next year's pick is currently tied up in the Atlanta Hawks deal that brought Kevin Herter to Sacramento it has pick protections on it. I think it's lottery protected or, or, or something along those lines, top 10 protected. I can't remember exactly what the protections are. So it kind of muddies the water a little bit of what he can do with this year's pick. But on draft night, he can certainly use the pick to move up, move down, acquire talent. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that Monty could do with that drafts pick out of simply selecting a player. And he's going to have to keep all of that uh, in mind. But I mentioned Keegan Murray. Of course, he hit a home run with that draft pick. Uh, and here's what Monty had to say, just the glowing review and the great things that Monty had to say, uh, about Keegan Murray this year. Yeah, I was, I was hoping I was be able to read off Keegan Murray rookie of the year on here. Um, but that was not to be, but, um, you know, uh, a rookie who started seven games in a playoff series, um, was if not, I, I believe the most winning impact rookie on the court this year. Um, and, while we didn't ask him to come in and shoot 30 shots, he certainly could have. I mean, he was the leading scorer in college basketball last year. Uh, but to come in and know what we need, which is actually defend multiple positions, uh, hit shots, cut to the basket, play off our, our veterans, um, I thought it was a fantastic year for him. Um, I, I, I wish I could say I knew he was going to come in and shoot 40% and hit over 200 threes, but – uh, testament to him. He com came in and surpassed expectations. Um, and uh, for him, it's just, I think he said it, it's just continued learning experience. I think we even saw the playoffs being a microcosm of his season and, um, you know, hopefully what his career is to come. And um, he just got better and better as the playoff series went on and, um, and was one of our best players in game six and seven. Um, so, you know, I think uh, I, I wish he had gotten more accolades, but uh, the good thing about Keegan is he doesn't care. Uh, and uh, he knows that he contributed to winning and um, we're going to need him to just continue to take on more and more going forward. And he's going to be able to do that. I think. And finally, another question mark this off season, a guy that we'll probably talk a little bit more about as the, uh, the, the summer goes on, but a guy that I've already asked, or I've asked questions about certainly, but I, uh, I've seen questions about and comments about uh, in, in the comment section on podcasts and received emails about, Sasha Vezinkov, like he's been doing great things over in Europe, is currently in the playoffs right now. Uh, over in Europe, is seems to be a really lethal shooter and someone who could plug into what the Sacramento Kings are trying to do nicely, kind of that 3-4 hybrid. Um, is Sasha Vezinkov someone who the Sacramento Kings plan on bringing over, or is he ready to come over? Will he be on the Sacramento Kings roster next year? Uh, Monty was asked about that. Yeah, Sasha's a guy, obviously, we traded for the rights last year and uh, continue to track. Uh, he's playing in the EuroLeague playoffs right now. So um, right now we're enjoying watching watching him and his team, and they've had a fantastic year. And, um, you know, Olympiacos is a fantastic club. And, um, you know, we've been able to to get to know him a little bit. And, um, you know, so, again, we'll sit down and see what our offseason look like um, here in the few, next few weeks, and uh, that'll be a decision for later in the summer. But uh, right now enjoying watching him in the playoffs. That's all I have from Monty McNair. There's a lot more from that press conference, almost 30-minute press conference. You can go and check that out uh, right now on abc10.com or the ABC10 YouTube channel if you want to watch it uh, in its entirety. In just a second, I'm going to play for you some of the best clips from uh, Mike Brown's 
uh, uh, end of season or, or exit interview press conference that he had yesterday. Have some great quotes and great uh, uh, clips from that. Before that, though, I want to remind you that today's episode of the Locked On Kings podcast is brought to you by Game Time Planning. And buying tickets should not be difficult and planning for events, right? It's it's 2023. We know that big events are happening. We know how to get to these events and things like that. So buying tickets should be as simple as hopping in your car or hopping in uh, some form of transportation and going down to the arena and getting in your seat and actually watching the game. Game time provides the easiest, simplest way for you to get tickets last minute and actually in a lot of ways rewards you for buying your tickets last minute with their exclusive flash deals on tickets for uh, any event like football games, basketball games, baseball games, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Uh, Game Time has so many different uh, events available, so many great ticket options. They have amazing uh, pictures and photos. Uh, they give you a realistic, a, a legitimately realistic view of what you're going to see and, and what your view is going to look like from your seat. I use the game time app to buy last minute tickets, super cheap tickets uh, to a San Francisco Giants game when I was in San Francisco on an off day uh, in between games three and games four of the playoff series with the Warriors. So I like it a lot. Uh, it, it's super easy to use, saved me a bunch of money. Uh, and, and of course I had a great time at the event because of game time, snag the tickets without the stress with the Game Time app, you can download the app, create an account, or use and use, I should say, promo code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I know I've said it before, but I want to make sure I say it again. Working with Mike Brown this year, and I say working with him, I interacting with him, asking him questions, talking with him. Um, was a just a wonderful experience, right? Like who Mike is is completely authentic. Like he he doesn't force it. When he's frustrated, when he when he wants this Kings team to do better, he'll tell you. When he's happy, he'll tell you. When uh when he's in a good mood or wants to joke around and and he makes connections with people, he'll do it. Like I I had a a couple of really just fun moments with Mike this year, whether it was him finding out that I love Dungeons and Dragons and asking me about it in a press conference and then sharing with me how much he loves Dungeons and Dragons and, and talking about golf or I, I ran into him. I was covering a, a Sac State Hornets men's basketball game and he's um, he, he's really close um, with David Patrick, who's the head coach of Sac State Hornets basketball. They have a, a history together. So he was there supporting and and he let me pull him aside and we chatted for a little while and I asked him questions and did an interview for ABC 10. Like he's just such a phenomenal human being. Of course, like the turn on the jets clip. And I I can't, I, I could gush forever about how amazing Mike Brown is. And I also put my hand up willingly and I encourage you go back and listen to the podcast that I recorded after. Mike Brown was hired and even go back and listen to the podcasts. When I found out that Mike was a finalist, I was a little underwhelmed by the hire because I, I based it off of like Mike Brown's history and things like that. And I, I thought there was some kind of more exciting and mysterious names out there. I could not be more happy to be wrong. Like I'm not underwhelmed at all. Mike was sensational. And look, Rick Adelman is my favorite head coach of all time. Favorite head coach of all time. I grew up with him being the leader of the Sacramento Kings. I, I think he deserves a statue in Sacramento. I think he deserves some recognition in the Golden One Center or up in the rafters. Or I have no idea. Rick Adelman, to me, is, is the GOAT of coaching, even if he ne never won here in Sacramento or won an actually, uh, actual ring here in Sacramento. Mike Brown is going to put pressure on that for me assuming he has a long successful career here in Sacramento because he's just such a wonderful person. I'm so blessed to be able to uh, interact with him. But going back to what I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, right? The gap between good and great, it, it's difficult. And I learned a lot of that from Mike Brown. And, and he, of course, talked about it uh, in his exit press conference. Uh, and this summer is going to be huge for us. Um, you know, it, it, I am proud of everybody. I am proud of what we accomplished uh, in year one. Um, but we got a lot of work to do. Um, it's only going to get harder from here. And that's the one thing you hope that everybody realizes that it's not going to be easy going forward. We're not sneaking up on anybody. People are going to come 
at us giving their best shot. They know exactly how we want to play, and they're going to game plan against it. And I always said to our group to go from here to here is relatively easy if you have a few things that go in your favor. To go from here to here, even though the distance is a lot shorter, it's a lot harder. But I feel we have the group to embrace that challenge and go get it done. I'm not sure if you saw the clip of Giannis Antetokounmpo after the Bucks were eliminated in the first round by the Miami Heat. He was asked if this season was a success or not. And he had a phenomenal answer. Like Giannis is just such an amazing, talk about gushing about Mike Brown. I could gush about Giannis Antetokounmpo forever too. Uh, he had just such a really impactful, interesting, and, 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 and well said answer to that question. I think it's a legitimate question asking if a season is a success or not, especially for a team with championship aspirations by the Milwaukee Bucks. But I love what Giannis said. And if you, this is not the Locked On Bucks podcast. If you want to hear um, what Giannis said, just look it up online. You'll find it. It's it's just amazing. But of course, Mike Brown was asked about how much of a success he considered this season for the Sacramento Kings. And what I love a lot about this answer that you're going to hear is it's clear Mike has significantly higher goals than simply what the Sacramento Kings did. Obviously, I think it means more to us to make the playoffs than it does to Mike Brown. He's done it many times over his career. So the Kings making uh, the playoffs, he recognizes how great that is for the city and how long it's been, but it means more to us than it does to him. And that's pretty clear in this answer, but he also doesn't brush it off. He recognizes the successes from this year, but clearly he wants more and that's what you should want out of your leader. You're proud of the guys and the way that they committed excuse me, competed, um, but uh, we're, we're just like everybody else in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I I came here saying that we want to compete for a championship like everybody else, and I know that, you know, a lot of people laughed at me, which was cool, but uh, that that's my feeling, you, you know. You, 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 just like everybody else, you're, win, you're in it to win the whole thing. It sucks to lose your last game, and only one team gets a happy feeling going into the summertime. I've experienced that happy feeling uh, four occasion, on four different occasions, and um, it, it sucks if you don't get to that point. So uh, from the standpoint of us not um, uh, attaining that, yeah, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed we lost. But that doesn't diminish um, what we accomplish as a group and the steps that we've taken as a group, you, you know, because sometimes you have to um, take certain steps in order to grow and to get there. And I can't sit here and say that um, if we lose in the first round, the second round, the third round, or even if we lose in the finals, that I wouldn't be disappointed, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, because I want more, and I hope that everybody involved wants more. But, again, like I said, that doesn't diminish the fact that you can't be proud of your accomplishments and you can't be looking forward to what you can possibly do the next time you get an opportunity together. It was interesting hearing from players over the course of the season about how Mike Brown was with them because – Mike has like this drill sergeant background, I think military family background. Like he's not afraid to rip into guys. And he he made jokes about ripping into Keegan Murray at times and chewing him out, ripping into Terrence Davis at times. But multiple players said this year that he did not get on anybody more than he got on De'Aaron Fox and DeMonte Sabonis. They're the two main guys on this roster and he got on them just as much, if not more, than he did the rest of the guys, even if they're the stars and they're performing and having phenomenal games. Well, Anytime Mike would talk about Domas and Fox, he typically was lobbying for them to, to get more recognition than what they got. And, and he's standing up for his guys. And, and typically coaches will, of course, always have the backs uh, of their guys. But to hear Mike talk about Fox developing into an elite player. And when I say elite, I'm talking about like the Steph Currys of the world, the LeBron Jameses of the world, the, the Jimmy Butlers, the Giannis Antetokounmpo's, like these MVP candidate elite, elite players. Fox isn't there yet. But listen to what Mike has to say about how Fox is is working his way towards becoming elite and what he has to do to become elite consistently. Uh, I thought Foxy had a chance to be 
great or really, really good, he surpassed that. And I think he has a chance to be elite. And it's going to be harder for him to get to that point. But I think he is more than capable. And I'm just excited to be a part of his journey, especially as close up as I am, and trying to help him get there. Uh, because when he does, Sacramento will be on fire. I'm going to turn it on here. I'm going to turn it on there. The great ones are on all the time. Whether it's – whether you're playing against the team that's in the 15th spot out of 16 teams in the West or you're in practice and you're having a shooting competition against a rookie and – another guy that doesn't play much and another starter or you're in a gym by yourself working out for your morning workout during the day and so that that competitive spirit uh is is always there and not just when you feel it's needed or others feel like it's needed and that at times uh truly takes a little bit of time to grasp or to comprehend, you know. Uh, uh, even looking at a guy like Steph or a guy like LeBron, you know, initially, yes, they were competitive and they did it this way and that way. and But eventually it got to a point was it doesn't matter who's in front of me. It doesn't matter the situation. It's about me doing this all the time because I know when I'm like this, A, I'm getting better. I'm becoming elite like only a few people out there have ever reached or have been. But more than that, my teammates feel it, and they feel it all the time. And when they feel it, the pressure's on for them to be as good as they can because they're going to follow my lead more than anything else. Last thing for Coach Brown, when he knew, or we, when we all knew pretty much over the course of the season that Mike was going to be named the coach of the year, we had a very strong inkling and he was having all the success and getting all this recognition. Like Mike will always deflect from himself. Like he gave credit to uh, his players, gave credit to his training staff, gave credit to the front office, and of course spent a ton of time giving the credit to his coaching staff. Mike acquired an amazing coaching staff here from Luke Louts and, and the work that he did um, with De'Aaron Fox specifically to help him with his jump shot. And we saw the uh, the the results from that. By the way, Luke Louts, uh, Mike let slip that Luke is going to be coaching the Sacramento Kings Summer League team this year, which is pretty cool. Uh, Jordy Fernandez, who coached the Kings Summer League team last year uh, and was his like associate head coach or his, his main assistant. Um, I'm going to miss guys, but just so many on there. I mean, Doug Christie, of course, and in his history, Jay Triano. Um, there's so many amazing members of that coaching staff that contributed uh, to Mike Brown, Brown's success. And typically when you have that much success with your coaching staff, other teams take notice of that and start to pluck away those guys for bigger jobs, head coaching jobs, which Jordy Fernandez, I think is up and eligible for the, uh, or is under consideration rather for the, is it the, um, I think it's the Toronto Raptors coaching job. There's the expectation that Mike isn't necessarily going to bring back the entire exact same coaching staff. However, he would of course love to bring them all back, but he's not going to hold them back. Here's what he had to say when asked about keeping his coaching staff around. Selfishly, you'd love to have everybody back, but that's not the reality of our business. Um, in terms of our coaching staff, I'd love to have everybody back. But again, that's not the reality of our business. You know, guys are going to get opportunities uh, to be head head coaches. Uh, they may get opportunities to move from behind the bench to the front of the bench. And, and uh, although, uh, you know, you want to keep everybody, you don't want to hold anybody back from bettering themselves uh, financially and their situation uh, for their family. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with the staff. This episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is also brought to you by Prize Picks, And right now they have a $1 million daily Superflex promotion only for the NBA playoffs and finals. 
Every day of the NBA playoffs and finals, one prize picks user will win a chance at becoming a millionaire. One entry will be placed after 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and will be randomly selected each day. Whoever placed that entry will be given a six pick flex with the following payouts. If you get all six picks correct, you get a million dollars. You get five picks correct, you get 80,000. You get four picks correct, you get six. 15,000. You can find out the full deal details about this event uh, and all the prizes on pricepicks.com slash million. But you might be confused, like pick what? What are you talking about? The way prize picks works is you, you pick two to six players and if they will go score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money. So say, for example, you're picking around about the, the Warriors Lakers game two and you say uh, the, the line for Steph Curry established by prize picks is like 28 and a half points. Well, you take the over on that. You take the under on Draymond Green's nine and a half points. Uh, you take the over on Clay Thompson's 11 and a half points. And you take the over on Anthony Davis's 23 and a half points, which would be absurdly low. But anyway, you, let's say you take those four. You get them right. Again, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And of course, it's not just for the NBA. This promotion is just for the NBA, but they have it for so many different sports, combat sports, football, basketball, baseball, you name it. Uh, they've got it. They offer safe and fast withdrawals. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. And if you download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com and sign up to play daily fantasy sports right now, first-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. You deposit $100, you get $100. You deposit $50, you get $50. Don't forget to answer promo code Locked On and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. So I mentioned a great guest that I have coming on tomorrow's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. He's been on the show a couple of times now. This will be his third time. Head coach of Iowa men's basketball, Fran McCaffrey, who of course was the head coach for Keegan Murray and the head coach for his brother, Chris Murray, uh, this past season. Uh, I had Coach McCaffrey on before the Kings drafted Keegan when we weren't sure who they were going to take to talk about Keegan. After the Kings drafted him, I had him back on before the season began. I'm very excited to have him on now that we've seen a full season of Keegan Murray to hear what Fran has to say because I know he was paying attention to what uh, Keegan was doing here in Sacramento. And then, of course, to get his thoughts on, on Chris Murray, who I doubt will fall as far as the early 20s where the Sacramento Kings are selected to pick, but we can keep our fingers crossed because it would be pretty darn cool uh, to have both the Murray twins here in Sacramento, although it would be very confusing for a lot of people. <laughs> but that would be pretty cool. So Fran McCaffrey is scheduled to join me on tomorrow's episode of the Locked On Kings podcast, so I hope you will join me for that. The offseason rolls on again. We're going to have so much offseason content for you, whether it's around the draft, summer league, California classic, free agency, training camp, everything in between. Uh, we have that for you, plus more general recap and celebration episodes of, of last year um, or last season that just passed, uh, even playoff coverage too from time to time. I will have all that available for you here on Locked on Kings for the offseason. So I hope you'll continue to join me. Appreciate your support as always. Can't wait to have you with me on the next episode of Locked on Kings. Until then, my name is Matt George. You've been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.